The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Merry Christmas. I am so glad that we can worship God today. We will be lighting a candle during the singing of Silent Night, and I encourage you to have a candle with you as you worship. Hear these words from the prophet Isaiah. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. Jesus Christ is our life and our light. In his name and in his power, let us worship God. God has come into the world. Glory to God in the highest. This is the good news for all people. To us is born a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. The world is transformed. And things cannot remain the same. It is made new in hope, peace, joy, and love. Let us pray. Source of light, shine in our lives and in your world with your transforming power. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen.
Let's pray. You surprised the world, O God, by coming not in clashing thunder or flashing lights, but in the quiet and simple splendor of a child's radiant face. Help us to understand this mystery of love beyond all loves, that we may be led to a new kind of love, a love that loves not by what we can get, but in what we can give, a love that counts not who is worthy to receive, but beyond our human calculations, is showered freely on all. Show us the way of Bethlehem's child, that in seeing we may believe, and in believing we may learn again how to love. Amen. How many of you enjoyed an Advent calendar this season? Now, we all know that Advent is about more than just counting down to Christmas. It's a season of anticipation and longing in its own right, quite apart from Christmas. And it is certainly much more than a daily chocolate treat. And yet, opening those little doors and finding a chocolate is fun. And counting down to Christmas is fun. It reminds us that our Advent longing for God and for God's kingdom has been heard, that a holy day is coming, a day when once and for all God declares he loves us, that he is with us, and that he will never leave us. That day is here now. So it's entirely appropriate that after 24 days of opening little cardboard doors, we find there is no little door numbered 25. This day, this holy day, it is God who opens the door. Let us read the story of the Savior's birth together, attentive to what God has done for us in Jesus Christ. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was a governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. In those days. That's how the story begins, in those days, the days of Caesar Augustus and Quirinius and the census and all the things that those words represent. We are talking about the Roman Empire with its legions, paved roads, and easy communication system. We are talking about conquered people living under a so-called Pax Romana, the peace of Rome, merciless, hierarchical, violent. We know about censuses. Governments count heads. They, they gather information. Caesar Augustus called for a census in order to, to expand his tax base and to plan for conscription into his armies. Mary and Joseph obey the decree and head back home to Bethlehem, but the census did not represent anything good. Luke begins the story of the Savior's birth by referencing historical world events. He starts with a wide-angle view of the Roman Empire and then zeroes in on a backward province and an unknown city and two poor Jews looking for a bed for the night. And then Luke tells us, While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. And suddenly, it is no longer in those days. It is God's new day. We live in that world represented by in those days. Events happen one after the other. First this thing, then that thing. That's how we tell time. It's 1 o'clock, it's 2 o'clock, it's 3 o'clock. We spend our lives in those days. But people of God have their watches set 
to God's time. We live in Canada in the year 2021, but we live in God's kingdom here among us now. We go to work, we go to school, we take vacations, and all the while, we are alert, looking for God's fingerprints, listening for God's call. For in Jesus Christ, God has broken into the world that we know and ushered in a new age. This Christmas, God has popped open that door. Come and live with me in my kingdom. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. This new age enters the world so silently. A young couple far from their home huddled around their newborn son. It's a silent night a holy night. Elsewhere, things are much louder. For this new age, this king and his kingdom are announced by God's army. It is an altogether terrifying sight. First one angel appearing in the night sky, soon joined by a great company of angels. The shepherds are terrified. At least they were terrified until this angel of the Lord spoke. Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Now you might have missed God's work in the manger scene, but there's no missing it here. The the first people to hear the good news of great joy are shepherds. The shepherds were on the night shift. No doubt they were passing the time, telling stories, singing songs, sharing their troubles and joys, saying their prayers. And it is no surprise that God chooses shepherds as the first witnesses to the incarnation. You see, biblically speaking, shepherds are a respected and beloved subsection of society. No, they were not religious or political leaders. They were not powerful or influential figures. 
but they stood in a long line of shepherds used by God for God's purposes. Rebecca, Rachel, Moses, David, all were shepherds who tended their flocks. Shepherds, all shepherds, represent those who care for the vulnerable. According to Psalm 23, God is himself a shepherd. And in three of the Gospels, Jesus describes himself as the shepherd of his people. Those shepherds living out in the fields nearby are a snapshot of this new age begun this night. For we are held and tended by God. God himself is looking out for us, acting for our good, protecting us, sheltering us, providing us with what we need. And we, in our turn, care for each other, support one another in our struggles, and make sure that every human is loved, fed, and sheltered. This Christmas, God has popped open that door. Come and live with me in my kingdom. Angels, we have heard on high, singing sweetly through the night, and the mountains in reply, echoing their great delight. Go When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what they had been told about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. 
But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had seen and heard, which were just as they had been told. The angel told the shepherds that the sign of the birth of the Savior was a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And when the night was again silent, the shepherds decided to go to Bethlehem for themselves. It was just as the angel said. Jesus is wrapped in cloths just like any other newborn. He does not have a halo. Mary and Joseph are as tired as any new parents, filled with that strange mixture of exhaustion and exhilaration. Jesus does not look special. What is special is how the shepherds interpret what they see. They recognize the sign, and so they recognize the Savior. They leave the manger glorifying and praising God, telling everyone what they have seen, telling people what God has done. Now Mary also interprets what she sees, cradling Jesus. She remembers what the angel Gabriel had said to her. Mary has seen her cousin Elizabeth and her baby. She has just birthed her own baby. Like the shepherds, Mary recognizes the sign and thus recognizes the Savior. Mary memorizes this moment and considers these things carefully. The signs of the Savior are subtle, and yet the shepherds and Mary knew what to look for. They recognized God's handiwork, and whether they skipped out of that cave singing or sat silently cradling the newborn, all who recognized the Savior were filled with wonder. So it is with us. The signs of the Savior are subtle, but when we recognize God's handiwork, we too are filled with wonder. This Christmas, God has popped open that door. Come and live with me in my kingdom. Thanks be to God. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare in room. And heaven and nature and sing, and sing, and nature sing, and heaven. Let's pray. Gracious and holy God, on this night we have heard how the world into which Jesus was born was ruled by governor, emperor, and king. Yet this story reveals that you, O God, are the only true sovereign 
almighty and everlasting. We thank you that justice and righteousness are in your hands. We praise you for the peace you have promised. Most especially, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, the light of the world, who dwells among us full of grace and truth. Hear now our prayers of intercession that all people might find healing, comfort, and joy. We pray for public officials, rulers, and leaders in our own time. Give them wisdom in decrees and decisions, a will for the common good, and the courage to work for peace in local communities and among the nations. We pray for all who work and watch this night, for those in hospitals and positions of public service, for those serving our country here and around the globe, for those in airports, trains, and bus stations, for those who work in shelters, hotels, and other places of hospitality. We pray for all who suffer this night, those who are sick and those who are dying, for the one who is cold, for the one who is lonely or grieving, for people who are hungry and thirsty, for all who struggle with addiction. We pray for families and friends, for those who are with us and those far away, for those traveling, for those who especially need your guidance in this season, and for those in our memories who now dwell with you. We pray, O oh God, with the multitude of the heavenly host, that through Jesus Christ your glory will lighten every darkness, that your peace will fill all in all. We pray that those who live in the midst of war may instead live without fear and destruction, that those who live with the threat of danger in homes or on city streets may instead dwell in safety, and that all your creatures and creation itself may be restored and renewed. Conform our prayers to your will and use us to accomplish your purposes for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. We light this candle because Jesus, the light of the world, was born on this day, and he brightens all things. Joy to the earth, the Savior reigns.
the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the perseverance of the magi, the obedience of Joseph and Mary, and the peace of the Christ child be yours this Christmas, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit remain upon you and with you always. Amen. Thank you.